Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, Ted Turner. Success leaves clues, kids. I just named five of the greatest names in business in the last 150 years. And they all have one thing in common. They're ball busters. They're hard as nails. Where does that leave you? I still work 50, 60 hours a week. And I haven't had to work in 35 years. You're not willing to do anything. You're not willing to sacrifice anything to be a high performance person. I don't want to be like that. No, no, most people don't. I want to be liked. Yeah, well, see, you want to fit in. I don't, I'm the only speaker that you're ever going to hear that really, with all his heart, doesn't give a shit. If I leave here you liking me, I did something wrong. If we would like to improve the quality of our lives, personally and professionally, what would be your advice? What can we do? What is most important? Well, the most important thing is self-esteem. Um, the people that we read about, the people that we uh, admire, uh, the Elon Musks, the Steve Jobs, the Warren Buffetts, etc., all have one thing in common. They have extremely high self-esteem. Of course, you've heard me say this before, self-esteem is built the first seven or eight years of life. And uh, unfortunately, we're with our parents the first seven or eight years of life. Uh, ergo, uh, we don't have too much high self-esteem. But to build high self-esteem, and the way you build high self-esteem, if you're 25, 35, or 45, is to uh, be around, uh, surround yourself with other people that have high self-esteem. Uh, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. And so uh, you can still, you can reverse your childhood by who you associate with. How do you do that? Well, you find people that are that are where you want to be, but they're already there. You're 22 years old, you're 32, you're 41 years old, and there's a guy or a gal who's 45 years old who is where you want to be. They've accomplished a lot of things. If you're into, uh, they're saving the world, they're using their money for good causes, go associate with those people, be around those people. And they're easy to find. Uh, but you, they're not going to knock on your door. They're not going to come to your apartment or your flat and ask you, oh, can I help you? And uh, the best tool I've ever seen, it's like it was designed for this, is LinkedIn. It's the best social media tool for what we're discussing. And uh, you can find these people. Now, just remember, everybody that's on LinkedIn, all the, I don't know, 20 million or whatever people that are on LinkedIn are all there for one reason. They're there because they want to do business, they want to meet people. Unlike some of the other social medias like Facebook uh, or Twitter. But I mean LinkedIn, they're there for a common purpose. They have a common bo uh, bond. They have a common goal. They want to expand their horizons. And it's a great tool. I had self-esteem. I didn't know till I got grown up and was an adult that everybody didn't have self-esteem. I didn't understand that. I didn't realize that everybody didn't have self-confidence. I didn't realize that everybody didn't have self-worth. Gallup did a poll in 2016, worldwide, 87.6% of all the people on the planet. We'll just, we'll just round it off. 87% of everybody that walks the face of the earth, 7.65 billion people are unhappy. The high-performance people, the one thing that they all have in common is they're hungry, hungry for a better life, hungry for change, hungry for the tough love their parents didn't give them. So is that what it needs? You, you have to be hungry, you, you need to feel the pain? Uh, growth only comes through pain. No pain, no gain. It's the same in life. Um, if love got the job done, you wouldn't need podcasts, you wouldn't need seminars. It doesn't. Tough love gets the job done. But being liked doesn't get you a raise when you're working for uh, whoever you're working for. Efficiency, accountability. Most people that come to seminars are there because they weren't held accountable when they were growing up. What is your definition of a high performance person? Being all that you can be every day. 24-7, 365, being all you can be. 
I asked the question a couple days ago. How many of you, you can raise your hand, but how many of you have kids? Don't raise your hand now. How many of you would like to have your kids grow up just like your parents? You know the answer, don't you? Close to zero. Because they were shitty role models. Now, I'm not going to ask the second question. How many of you would like your kids to grow up and be like you? But being a high performance person is a full time job. I'm like this when I wake up in the morning to brush my teeth. I'm like this when I brush my teeth before I go to sleep. I'm like this 24 7, 365, and I've been like this for the better part of 50 years. I'm always like this. I'm always pushing the edge of the envelope. But the sun is going to gobble up the earth in about between 7 and 11 billion years. Although I'm planning on living a long time, I'm not going to live quite that long. But uh, I, you know, just work hard. I don't know any other thing than hard work. And hard work is out of favor now. It just is. But I'm a dying breed. I'm a Neanderthal. I understand that. I'm sad to say that because I say, I, I know it has, it's a sad commentary for the human race. Because you're not willing to make any sacrifices to be high performance. I still work 50, 60, I don't consider it work. I still work 50, 60 hours a week. And I haven't had to work in 35 years. So the bottom line, you're not willing to do anything. You're not willing to sacrifice anything to be a high performance person. It sounds strange in hindsight. I found making $450 million easy. Easy. And I wanted to do something more with my life. And so when I got into the financial coaching, I wanted to change the fabric of financial coaching, which I have. And I wanted to be known as the, uh, well, and now that's what they call me, the greatest of all time. But this was just me flapping my mouth 25 years ago. Now I am the greatest of all time, vis-a-vis -vis creating wealth through people like yourselves. And uh, I, went, you know, I wanted to leave that legacy. And I wanted people, like I'm from the body, I'm from a real uh, rough background, been in jail five times, did a lot of ugly things. Uh, yeah, but I, I'm glad it happened to me because I know what the other side, like some of you have never been kicked in the teeth. I know what it is to be kicked in the teeth and my teeth be on the, on the pavement. I know what that feels like. I know the humiliation. Forget the pain, you get over the pain. I wanted the poor kids to understand that they, they had a, a methodology, there was a methodology uh, used by one of them that was once poor and got in a lot of trouble, you can do it if you want to do it bad enough. The operative part of that little description is if you want it bad enough. Muhammad Ali, arguably one of the greatest fighters I've ever, he was talking shit since he's 14, 15 years old, I'm the greatest. Before he ever had a professional fight. My, my father said, if you've got something in, in your mind, you should come out of your lips. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. And you've been taught all your life not to ask. You've been trained, keep your head down. Don't embarrass yourself. Don't embarrass the family. Don't say things that may not happen. And I do just the opposite. I tell you to set goals beyond your lifetime. I, I tell you to set goals as soon as humanly possible. When kids come to me, they want to make a million, 10 million, you know, and, and then when they've made a hundred million, they say, Mr. Pena, we would have never, ever dreamt that we could create a hundred million until we met you. You will never exceed your highest expectation. You will never exceed your highest, craziest thought. Never. That's a guarantee. But I mean, kids, I mean, you can have whatever you want. 